You're listening to nothing important. I finally watched Dawn of Justice. Batman versus Superman? Yes. And I have to say... Yeah. Hello? Where's Doug? Doug is downtown. Where the fuck is he at? <laughs> Doug, he's... I don't know. Him and Dawn left. I'm recording a podcast right now. Say hi, Christian. Hi. Hi, Hello. Christian. Your brother's an asshole. So, nothing important, fans. That is Christian looking for my brother. <laughs> There's a, the, This is not what... The town festival is going on downtown. I'm choosing to record a podcast instead of going, but my brother's friend is looking for him. Well, he's my friend, too, <laughs> but he's looking for my brother, who's not here. That's not one of my new favorite uh, <laughs> moments in Nothing Important Podcast. We've had some hilarious moments, but uh, it, first off, on my end, it sounded like uh, Kristen broke down the door and then came in and yelled, where's my... So it almost sounded like you were getting held up, so that, that was great. Please enjoy. This is the Nothing Important Podcast. Insert witty tagline here. My name is Brian, and with me, as always, is my starter Pokemon, Dave. Dave, how's it going? Jigglypuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's funny because when we grew up, uh, or I guess we were older. See, like the thing about Pokemon is, is that um, it was kind of like my younger brother is about five years younger than me, and that was more his generation, mm -hmm. where for me it was Mario. Right. Uh, but one thing that we... Uh, you know, but obviously Pokemon has been around and selling millions of games literally every year for the past like 25 years. Gotta catch them all. So, exactly. So um, it, it's funny that you sang the Jigglypuff tune because <laughs> the cartoons always told us that Pokemon always say their name. That's yeah, all they right? talk. So right? like, That's how they right? Like so Pikachu says Pikachu, Jigglypuff says Jigglypuff. You know, Bulbasaur says Bulbasaur. Mm -hmm. That's what we were always taught. But in Pokemon Go. Uh, the big per crazy game everybody's playing. Uh, they just make like screeches and squawks. They don't really <laughs> say their own name, and I was a little disappointed in that. Well, you can change their name though, so I guess maybe that's you, you a can change around. your name, but the character itself doesn't doesn't say the name. Mm, that's bullshit. Yeah, that is bullshit. So anyway, Dave, uh, great to talk to you again this week. We're a little bit late this week due to a variety of reasons. Uh, we actually planned originally to record a couple days ago, but I wasn't able to make it just because things have been kind of crazy here at my house. But I mm -hmm. understand you had a great interview with Ann Cherkis, uh, who's a writer for Better Call Saul. Yes, actually, um, as you will find out in the interview, she listened to our show about Better Call Saul before she actually worked on Better Call Saul. Dude, that is so cool. Way and cool. Still, and so still I chose to come on the show to talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like a small feat within itself. Right. Uh, so uh, those of you, if you're curious about our interview with Ann Turkis, we'll have that up in a few days over at our uh, Better Call Saul podcast called It's a Good Man. It's just kind of waiting for approval right now when you talk. Sometimes when you talk to... Uh, Hollywood people and people that are in that industry, they just want to, especially something as successful and big as Better Call Saul, mm -hmm. sometimes they just want to make sure that they get the, uh, uh, they, they don't really censor it. They just want to make sure that they're not giving away spoilers or anything for season three. So then it right. has to go through an approval. They never tell us to like tone down the language or anything like that because I'd probably tell them to piss off. But yeah, no, uh, it, you know, it's just, uh, they just want to make sure that there's no spoilers out there or they didn't accidentally uh, let two idiots with microphones from Chicago, Illinois know anything more than we're supposed to. Right. So. Yeah, cause <laughs> we did get a little detailed into the uh, in little bit of inside the writer's room. So it's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, I want to make sure it's all good before we actually make it public for our wonderful, wonderful listeners to consume. Make sure to check that out in the coming days over at our Better Call Saul podcast. It's all good, man, which you can find at www.itsallgoodman.com or on Twitter. And we'll probably tack that interview onto the ass end of one of our Nothing Important episodes as well. Mm -hmm. But Dave, I wasn't I wasn't there. I haven't heard it. And uh, you told me very little about it. So I'm, a, I'm excited to, uh, you know, when I get a chance, I'll listen to it. And then, of course, we'll record uh, that episode of It's All Good, Man, and post it over there for the Better Call Saul people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll get on it and get it over to you and whatnot and whatever, yeah. 
Yes, sir. So, uh, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> kind of a fun, kind of, uh, it's been kind of a fun, probably eight or nine days for us. Last week we interviewed Milo Yiannopoulos mm -hmm. and, uh, what, what we liked about Milo is, uh, he, he's unapologetic. And of course he's, he causes a bunch of, uh, controversy everywhere he goes. And then recently in the days since we've talked to him, uh, he's actually been banned from Twitter, yeah, which, uh, which most has people... definitely helped. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's definitely helped our downloads <laughs> because has it because but, uh, I was thinking about that because most of the people we interview share the link through Twitter. So ironically, he can't share the link through Twitter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's okay though. Uh, uh, yeah, so I guess he got banned from Twitter, and I, I know you have some thoughts on that, but honestly, I I I don't really see what the big deal is from my personal standpoint because it's not like Twitter is government funded or anything. So if a private company wants to kick somebody off their Twitter, I mean, that's that's not really a free speech issue. That's just that company being dicks. Yeah, it's their prerogative, and then you can react to that however you want to because it's their company. Yeah, there, there are some people that are trying to make it a free speech issue, and I mean, I guess that is the most basic foundation it is, but uh, I, I mean, Twitter can kind of do whatever Twitter wants to do with Twitter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you can't, I mean... Yeah, you can say whatever you want, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I can't come into your I, I, if I come into your house and call you a fucktard, you're gonna kick me the fuck <laughs> out of your house. I I have every right to say it. <laughs> right, right, uh, and I guess the the big controversy erupted. I guess uh, Milo got in some sort of a Twitter Twitter fight with uh, one of the stars of the new Ghostbusters movie. And uh, it, it kind of blew up from there. And I, I've been thinking about it because it's a big news stories right now. And you kind of uh, stated that you want to touch on this subject a little bit. But see, this is where my uh, everybody needs to just shut the fuck up comes into play. No, I wanted to touch <laughs> you on. You know what I mean? I, I did. I wanted to touch on it on a different way. Okay, shoot. Um, I think the whole the feud started about Milo's. Ghostbusters is this big feminist whatever thing and is like getting like people reading way too much into this Ghostbusters movie when in all actuality right. it just looks like it sucks. Right. Yeah. It looks like <laughs> a terribly <laughs> shitty film. And and really, I'll be honest, I don't even hold the first Ghostbusters in that big of a regard. Like I know people I know people say it's like the best comedy ever and it's this big I gotta amazing do an argument film. about it. If it was whether or not it was the best eighties comedy, I said no, other people said yes. But it's still one See, of the I top, never even, in my opinion. I never even really thought it was a. To me, it's not that funny. Like, I mean, it's very amusing, mm. but it, it's again um, a movie where I don't really sit there and enjoy the whole thing. There's definite parts where I'm just like, ah, oh, yeah. so fucking boring. Like, come on, like, <laughs> get to get to the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Like, <laughs> like, fuck, fuck this Gozer bullshit. Like, Gozer's, you know what I mean? Like, Gozer the Gozerian is awesome. Shut your face. <laughs> I'm not saying he's that great, but I mean, it, it was a good movie and, uh, you know, I, I don't even understand why it became that big of a controversy ever. See, here's the thing is like the only thing I can relate it to is the legend of Zelda, right? Like Nintendo, the legend of Zelda <laughs> That's is That's the only thing you relate Ghostbusters to is the legend of Zelda. Explain. Well, it, because think about this. Okay. So like the legend of Zelda, the main protagonist is an elf boy. I guess he's elf. I guess elfin. I guess we'd elf, elfin teen. Elf I guess would be a good way. Elf. Elf esque, oh. you know, Link, you know, that, that's what he is. He's a boy. I was just thinking, my head just went alphacrat, alpha publican, alphatarian. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Political season. Alphas. <laughs> so, um, but the whole thing is, is, is he's a boy. Mm -hmm. Link was a boy. He's a fucking boy, right? So then this whole uh, Gamergate thing happened, which I'm not even sure what the hell it was. All I know is it has something to do with feminists fighting non-feminists, blah, blah, blah. Here's what, and basically, here's what I know about Gamergate. Apparently, there's a thing called Gamergate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, apparently that is a hashtag. <laughs> I know uh, nothing else. I don't know what the fuck it's about. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. All I know is that one of the byproducts of it, there was a movement for some reason to make Link a girl. In the next Legend of Zelda game. But Link's not a girl. So why would anybody get upset that Link isn't a girl? <laughs> you know what I mean? And so with, with Ghostbusters, it, I feel it probably would have went one way or one of two ways. Like if they would have discontinued the story and then the old Ghostbusters passed the baton to four women 
everybody would be like, oh, well, that, that's kind of interesting. That's kind of cool. Right. But no, what they did is they tried to reboot everything, and they basically just gender swapped the entire story, which is dumb because it's, it's well, nobody said that women can't be Ghostbusters. It's just that the four Ghostbusters aren't women, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like they don't happen. They don't happen to be women. Like, right. uh, like you can you can make four women the Ghostbusters, but don't pose it as the Ghostbusters are four women. And I think that's what the big deal came to be. And uh, you know, Milo he has his stick, and he's uh, you know pretty successful for doing it. And of course, he wrote what he wrote and caused this big Twitter pissing contest. And uh, you know, I, in all honesty, I find it kind of amusing. <laughs> The most amusing thing is something I can't say on the podcast. So we'll let you do the the research on your own. Dave's hinting to uh, some, I guess, inflammatory tweets that Leslie Jones, is that her name? Like, I guess, tweeted yeah. to Milo back and forth. And something anyway, like the end result, know. yeah, the, the end result was Milo got banned from Twitter for life. And, and it's this big brouhaha. And now he can't tweet Nicole, out the link to our episode. And now he can't tweet out the link to our episode. But the big... Uh, uh, kind of interesting during that time too, Dave, is I've actually had people who listen to our shows. Uh, there's been a few people that are like, come on guys, like Milo, you had Milo Yiannopoulos on your show. Yeah. And once again, uh, I don't speak for Milo and Milo doesn't speak for me. All I can say is one, if we get an intriguing guest, which I would argue he's a pretty goddamn intriguing person. Mm-hmm. Like I'll I'll have him on the show. I don't think we got overly political and whatever politics and stuff that he said at the time. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, when we have a guest on here, this is their time, right? Like we we facilitate the conversation, right. but it's their it's their time. It's not our job to argue or debate because we're not that type of show. Mm-hmm. And two, in all honesty, um, he couldn't have been more of a gentleman. This is one, off of, the it's air. one he, of my favorite conversations and one of my favorite people to deal with. Yeah, the, and one of your favorite people to deal with, you kept telling me how smooth things were going, how gracious he yeah. was with his time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, once again, uh, last thing I'll say about the Milo interview, everybody who's new that listened to us, talk to Milo. Welcome. We're glad to have you, uh, as uh, listeners to the nothing important podcast. And, uh, anybody that for some reason had an issue with Milo being on our show, I think the interview, uh, spoke for herself. And I think he was, uh, he was nothing more, than a gentleman and i appreciate him coming on our show i would second that because i even disagree with a lot of his politics not all of his politics but a lot of it and uh Mm. you know we didn't get into it It it's fine see here's once again i think this is just kind of where we are in the world where um is uh people tend to believe that somebody's a bad person if they don't agree with their politics right and I, i i and that's not a knock against anybody that wrote me or anything in particular, I guess I'm just saying, like, hey, you know what? Different viewpoints, different viewpoints. Thanks for listening. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And uh, I, I think Milo was great, and I'd have him back on again. I would absolutely, too. And I believe that you have to expose yourself to opposing viewpoints to make sure you know where you stand and make sure you know where other people stand. Because if you don't understand the opposite side of the debate, you cannot debate. Absolutely. And you know, uh, you know what's kind of fun, Dave, is we... Uh, so like there as a podcast we're always looking for avenues for you know to get more people to listen to us right mm-hmm. cuz the, th- the thing about podcasts i think we talked about when we did that interview for some um for that that woman with, in london with bex yeah exactly so w- when we did that interview you know she asked us uh what i think the biggest hurdle for podcasting is and uh you know you drive down the radio whether it's am or fm it's so easy to find something to listen to there are more people that listen to a one hour block of the smallest AM radio station in Chicago that probably listens to most podcasts over the course of an entire year. Yeah, probably. It, it's just the way it goes. And it's all about ease of consumption. Uh, ease. Well, e- ease of- yeah, ease of consumption. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm constantly finding ways and, uh, uh, to get it out there, and you know, you can put it on a ton of different things that feed from iTunes, like TuneIn Radio and all that. But again, it's very active listening, uh, you know. And it was suggested to me to do YouTube, so <laughs> I've actually started putting uh, nothing important uh, podcast up on YouTube. So if anybody is new and just started listening to us uh, because of Milo or Violet Bean or just about anybody that we talk to, or if you randomly stumbled across us on uh, on Reddit or uh, iTunes. 
please make sure to look up Nothing Important Podcast on YouTube, where uh, I am in the process of uploading all of our interviews uh, there as well. One thing to kind of entice somebody, if you want to see me and David are silliest, uh, about maybe like a long time ago, what, five, six months ago, you did at that time of the month yeah, and was, you covered uh, Big Girls? It was winter huh? time. It was winter time. Yeah, it, I remember. It was, it was fucking cold. So we, we Dave, not me, Dave, uh, sat down in the studio and did a version of Big Girls Don't Cry by Fergie. And Dave and I, uh, at, at the time, I think it was just after Christmas because I just got a new iPad mm -hmm. uh, for my wife for Christmas. And Dave and I sat down and uh, had some beers and recorded a video. And we, we tinkered with it a little bit, not really sure what the hell we were going to do with it. It was just <laughs> kind of a fun thing that we thought was hilarious. And uh, I'm going to post that tonight, uh, as soon as I get off the phone with you, on <laughs> our YouTube. <laughs> and you can see Dave and I pretend to... Uh, Make well, I don't know. It was very real. We, we were drinking and hanging out in the studio yeah. and just having fun. So if you want to see me and Dave clown around... And, and then some horrible uh, video editing, yes, on my part. <laughs> right, but, you know, I, I was watching it. I was watching it uh, a little earlier when you first we transferred it as I was trying to get the computer and everything set up. Uh -huh. Um uh, that's kind of part of its charm. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's, that's what we do, you know? That's what we do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> fake, it, fake it till you make it. So also the good thing about being on YouTube too is uh, since iTunes is and Podcatcher and all that shit is a complete pain in the ass, especially if you're trying to listen from podcasts from home and you want to be listening over your computer or PC while you're at work or doing work or just jacking around or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. You can look us up on YouTube and you can just stream it in the background. It'll be easy for you to hear. Mm-hmm. I finally watched Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice. I have I have not seen it yet, and I've tried and tried. Really? Yeah, you're not missing. Yeah, I don't. You're not. I don't know, man. I don't know. the The honest movie trailers. Shout out to a previous guest that we interviewed. We interviewed the epic voice guy from Honest Movie Trailers, John Bailey. That movie trailer is spot on because it's is like it? the way they name it you know they do the funny name it's like it's like batman right. versus superman versus critics versus fans versus the studio versus Zack snyder because <laughs> it, it's just this big mess it's a mess mm -hmm. it's it's crazy it, i don't understand why they didn't split it into in the two different movies and uh once again, see, and the funny thing is I have a tattoo of Superman and I'm a big Batman guy. Mm -hmm. So you would think that would be natural for me to. <laughs> to <sit laughs> you're, you're like the because, target demographic. Right. And, uh, and no, I, I can't, uh, mm -mm. I, 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 I try to watch it, but I, I totally agree. I think it's just a little too dour. And, and the funny thing is even with the, even with the Christian Bale Batmans, even though they were, they were gritty quote unquote and realistic, mm -hmm. they weren't as just like dour that's the only way i can describe it as batman versus superman like i understand it's supposed to be heavy and so intense mm -hmm. but um but there, there has it's, to be a little bit of levity and a little bit of like tongue-in-cheek too yeah superhero. it's a comic, a book, comic movie, book movie man i want to have right. fun watching it i don't want broody which is just perfect. And, i mean the best part about it which i said I, i'm not surprised is that as ben affleck's the highlight of the goddamn movie that's what a lot of people say is that he's a really good Batman and uh and uh Yeah, and, and props you know, it, props to crack.com. They called that right when he was announced, somebody wrote an article about how he might actually be a really good Batman and mm -hmm. it was spot on. He he was. Yeah, and it's kind of funny that we're recording this today cuz we're recording this on a Saturday evening and uh Comic-Con is going on right Comic -Con now. Comic-Con is going and, on right now, yeah. And earlier today uh, Warner Brothers and DC Comics released a surprise trailer for the Justice League movie that's coming out next year. That's a follow up mm -hmm. to Batman versus Superman. And you could tell from the Justice League trailer already there's a new like lightness and tone, you know? Yeah. So it, it's still, it's still like the Zack Snyder grittiness and style, you know, grittiness and such. Mm -hmm. But you, you can feel that there's like less weight. To it than anything that you see in Batman versus Superman. Hmm. I got in Batman versus Super. Okay, so years ago, this is like literally 10, 12 years ago, where the return of Superman came out. And I remember going into the movie theater, and, you know, Lois Lane had a kid. Mm -hmm. And I remember th thinking the whole time, I'm like, that's fucking Superman's kid. Yeah. If that's fucking Superman's kid, yep. I will walk out of the movie theater. That's so convoluted and stupid. That's fucking Superman's kid. And then there's this dumb scene where the kid picks up a piano and <laughs> throws it across the room and kills the bad guy. I'm like, all right, fucking Superman's kid. And I left, 
right? Mm-hmm. So this is how far I got into Batman versus Superman. I got as far as, uh, for some reason, Lois Lane is talking to a terrorist in the desert, and there's a photographer. Yes. And he he has yet to introduce himself. It's Jimmy Olsen. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, if this like uh, metrosexual looking pretty boy <laughs> like wandering photographer is fucking Jimmy Olsen, I'm gonna fucking scream. And then he ended up being Jimmy Olsen, and I was like, <laughs> ah, like that's what? Like, okay, like maybe that's just a weird way of how they meet, right? Right. Maybe that's just like they just kind of recon. They didn't like you know he, uh, Jimmy Olsen didn't start off as like a like in the mail room of the daily planet and work his way up to a photographer with Lois Lane. Like maybe that for story's sake, that's just how they meet. Mm-hmm. Right. Then he became a CIA agent and I'm like, what the fuck is happening? And then he got shot in the face <laughs> and I'm like, all right, <laughs> well, that's a, that's enough Batman versus Superman for me. So, <laughs> so that is as far as I got in Batman versus Superman. That's funny because it's the same scene that ruined it for me. Although I never picked up that it was Jimmy Olsen, I must have missed something. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. Well, um, I watched the extended cut, so uh, I don't know if they I don't know if they cut that out. They might have. But on the on the extended cut, uh, that's when that's when the photographer and Lois Lane first meet in the desert, and he introduces himself as Jimmy Olsen. I'm like, mother, See, I missed that. that is Jimmy. Yeah. And then he and then he's outed as CIA, and I'm like, son of a bitch. And then he gets shot in the face, and I'm yeah. like, all right, you know, fuck it, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go watch. Uh, bloodline on Netflix or something. <laughs> well, the, the thing that lost me about that scene was that he the, he got shot and then they attacked the terrorists. Like wasn't he supposed I guess I don't know. See, like, I thought like he was a part of the group that attacked the terrorists and then it's like, well why the hell did they wait for him to get shot before they attacked him? They just let the guy die. This is fucking retarded. But I guess I wasn't I following know, it that closely cuz honestly I was kind of like I just wasn't into it. I you know I watched the yeah. whole damn thing. But I just, I never really got invested in the movie. And so the here's what fucking, happened to me. Did you know about the Martha thing? Oh, yeah, uh, because uh, Bruce Wayne's, both of their parents is Martha. Yeah, it's kind of a half-assed. So here's here was my viewing experience. Jimmy Olsen gets shot in the face. And I'm like, fuck it. At least I just want to see the fight scene between Batman and Superman. Right. So I keep like fast forwarding to like different spots to try to find. <laughs> you better go to the last the twenty minutes scene. of the movie, there, guy. Yeah, and and when I couldn't find it after like five or six attempts at fast forwarding several minutes at a time, I was like, ah, fuck it, maybe I'll just see it someday. So, <laughs> so for me, Batman versus Superman is going to start with uh, is going to start with Justice League, I guess. I guess. I, although this yeah. just made me want to see Suicide Squad more. I guess I I think that's going to be cool. It looks good. That that one appeals you, to me for some reason. Here's here's the deal. If you want to see suicide, okay, so this is where DC Comics and Warner Brothers excel is in their animated universe, right? Mm-hmm. So if you want to see the best Batman versus Superman movie, what you want to do is like uh, go to Google Play or iTunes. And you want to look up uh, the Dark Knight Returns Part One and Two, or the Dark Knight Returns Deluxe Edition, and it's almost it's almost uh, a perfect adaption of the Batman versus Superman storyline that 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 fucking movie is based off. Okay, of. there you so go. So the Dark Knight Returns, I promise, even if you're not in cartoons, you want to take a look at it. Uh, it it's amazing. From the cartoon animated expert that I know. Yeah. Absolutely. And if you're interested in Suicide Squad, do yourself a favor and check out Batman Assault on Arkham. It's another DC Comics animated film, Mm -hmm. but it tells the origin. Of course, it has Batman in it, and it's a really good adaption of the Suicide Squad, their origin, who they are, and why they do what they do. What they're about. So I'm curious to see. Right. Which would actually make three. Then there would be three adaptions of the Suicide Squad. Hmm out there because there's uh dc legends has an adaption of the suicide squad will smith has the suicide squad movie and then of course there's batman assault on arkham which is an animated suicide squad movie well, there you go so you definitely want to check it out there you go absolutely so uh dave coming up in the next coming weeks uh i don't have any guest book but i am working on it feverishly and i think you're gonna like some of the guests that we get in here it's gonna be a lot of fun i usually dave. do you do a good job as the uh producer of the podcast and uh, yeah, I haven't really had any guests that I haven't enjoyed yet. But then again, I don't think anybody's going to come on our crappy little podcast that we're not going to enjoy talking to. 
Yeah, you know. that, that's true. You know, um, I, I only talk to people who I give a relatively shit, uh, relative shit about. And uh, let's face it, that's a short list, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's awesome talking with you again this week. Uh, I can't wait to hear your interview with Ann Cherkis from Better Call Saul. We'll probably have that up next week sometime at uh, the It's All Good Man podcast. And then, of course, we'll throw that up at the end of uh, probably next week's episode as well. Make sure to check out YouTube. Uh, go ahead and search Nothing Important Podcast. It has all of our podcasts on there. If it doesn't, I will get it up there as soon as possible because apparently it's a huge pain in the ass to recode an MP3 file to an MP4 to make it YouTube-friendly and then upload it to YouTube. Huh. It's amazing because you can upload and download stuff from an email that's the size of a podcast in about two minutes. But if you want to make it, but it takes about a fucking half an hour just to turn an MP3 into a YouTube friendly video file. And then it takes another half an hour to fucking upload it to YouTube itself, which I'm not really sure why that takes so long. So if anybody out there has a quicker way of doing it, or maybe my windows movie maker program is absolute dog shit and it doesn't <laughs> do it that quick. But that's the that's the only way I know how. So anyway, if you if you don't see our podcast up there or an episode that you're looking for, or if it looks like v relatively few episodes, or if it looks like that they're all uploaded on the same day, it's only because it's a work in progress. Hopefully, I'm gonna get all 100 Better Call Saul <laughs> podcasts up to before the next season of uh, Better Call Saul. And uh, like I said, you can check out that video that Dave and I made for Big Girls Don't Cry. It's just kind of a fun thing. And uh, we figured we'd probably, if we're going to upload videos to YouTube, we may as well have one thing that's an actual video. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Please make sure to give us those good reviews on iTunes. We love seeing the four-star reviews. We love reading the comments. And uh, make sure that you check out our Better Call Saul podcast. And Dave... Everybody gives Christian Bale so much crap for the way he did the Batman voice. I do like the fact that they made it technological with Ben Affleck, but come on, man. Give Christian Bale a break of the Batman voice. You can stop recording now. <laughs> Be sure to follow Nothing Important online at nothingimportantpodcast.com. Find us on iTunes, on Twitter at NotImportantPC, and you can also find us on Facebook. Nothing Important is recorded with help from Third City Sound in Joliet, Illinois. Thanks for being awesome.